Have you ever wondered why some legal cases get dismissed even before they start? Today, we're diving into the world of civil procedure, specifically focusing on Order 7 Rule 11 of the Code of Civil Procedure, 1908. This rule is a crucial part of the civil legal system as it outlines the grounds for the rejection of a plaint. A plaint is the written complaint or allegation which initiates a civil case. If a plaint doesn't meet certain criteria, as outlined by Order 7 Rule 11, it can be dismissed before the case even begins. This rule ensures that the legal process is used efficiently and effectively, saving valuable time and resources for the court and the parties involved. So, what are these criteria? What makes a plaint eligible for rejection? Let's dig deeper into the various points of Order 7 Rule 11. Picture a scenario where a plaint doesn't mention a cause of action. Now let's delve into the intricacies of this facet of Order 7 Rule 11, A, of the Code of Civil Procedure, 1908. A cause of action, in legal terminology, is a set of facts or circumstances that give rise to a legal complaint. It's the backbone of a plaint, the reason why a person has brought a suit in the first place. A cause of action encapsulates the plaintiff's right to seek judicial relief, the defendant's act or omission that violates this right, and the consequent harm done to the plaintiff. The cause of action is crucial because it is the very foundation of the case. It's akin to a compass guiding the court in its quest for justice, providing the legal context and the substantive issues at play. Now, imagine if this compass, the cause of action, is missing. The court is essentially left navigating a vast legal ocean without any direction. The absence of a cause of action in a plaint is like a story without a plot or a song without a melody. It's incomplete and fails to serve its purpose. This is why Order 7th Rule 11, A, stipulates that if a plaint doesn't mention a cause of action, it can be rejected. It's a safeguard ensuring that each case presented before the court is properly framed and ready for legal scrutiny. Without a cause of action, the court has no basis to proceed. Therefore, the plaint can be rejected. Imagine claiming a relief that is undervalued in the plaint. It's like asking for a penny when you've lost a pound. This brings us to Order 7, Rule 11, Subsection B of the Code of Civil Procedure, 1908. It states that if the relief claimed in the plaint is undervalued, the plaint can be rejected. Now let's break this down. What do we mean by relief? Simply put, relief is the remedy or the benefit that a plaintiff seeks from the court. It could be compensation for damages, an injunction to stop certain activities, or even the enforcement of a contract. The valuation of this relief is essentially a monetary approximation of the benefit that the plaintiff seeks. It's a crucial component because it determines the court fees and to an extent, the jurisdiction of the court. Now, why does undervaluation matter? Well, undervaluation of the relief claimed can lead to less court fees being paid. This not only goes against the principles of justice and fairness, but it can also lead to an incorrect determination of the court's jurisdiction, which can have serious procedural implications. Moreover, undervaluation could mean that the plaintiff may not receive the full extent of the relief they are entitled to. This can result in an unfair judgment, and that's something the court always strives to avoid. So, to ensure fairness and uphold the principles of justice, the court can reject a plaint if the relief claimed is undervalued. An undervalued relief claim can lead to an unfair judgment, hence the need for its rejection. What if the plaint is written on a paper that is not properly stamped? This question leads us directly into the third ground for rejection under Order 7 Rule 11 of the Code of Civil Procedure 1908, also known as CPC. Let's delve a bit deeper into what it means for a plaint to be properly stamped. In the realm of law, stamping refers to the process of affixing a legal stamp paper to a document. Why is this important, you ask? Well, it's a way of paying the government the stamp duty, which is essentially a tax levied on certain legal documents. This tax is a crucial aspect of validating the document. So, if a plaint is written on a paper that is not properly stamped, it essentially means that the required stamp duty has not been paid. This is a serious issue because it contravenes the law and undermines the validity of the document. Now, let's look at the consequences. 
If a plaint is found to be improperly stamped, the court has the power and the obligation to reject it outright. This is not a discretionary power, it's a mandatory one. The court cannot overlook this lapse, regardless of the content of the plaint or the merits of the case. Remember, every detail counts in the legal world. An improperly stamped plaint is a legal faux pas, and it's grounds for rejection. What happens when a suit is barred by a statute or the plaint is not filed in duplicate? Let's dive right into the foundations of Order 7 Rule 11, Subrules D and E. The first point, D, states that a suit may be rejected if it's barred by any statute. Simply put, if a suit is forbidden by a law or an act, it's considered barred. The law can be any valid legislation in force, whether it's a central or a state act. It's crucial to understand that the court doesn't entertain such cases because they're considered legally invalid. A suit may be barred by a statute due to several reasons, like it's beyond the limitation period, or it's against public policy, or it's in violation of a specific law. Now let's move on to the next point, E, which deals with the filing of the plaint. The Code of Civil Procedure mandates that the plaint must be filed in duplicate. The reason behind this is quite practical. One copy is meant for the court's records, and the other is for the defendant. If the plaint is not filed in duplicate, the court may reject it. This rule ensures that all parties involved in the case have access to the same information, maintaining transparency and fairness in the proceedings. In both these cases, whether it's a suit barred by a statute or a plaint not filed in duplicate, the court exercises its mandatory power under Order 7, Rule 11 to reject the plaint. Remember, this is not an optional power, it's a compulsory one. The court can refer to the written statement to make this decision. These two points underline the importance of following procedure and the law of the land. It's not just about filing a case, it's about ensuring that the case is legally sound and procedurally correct. After all, the pursuit of justice should always be in harmony with the law. What if the plaint does not comply with Order 7, Rule 9? This question, though seemingly simple, holds significant weight in the context of civil procedure. Order 7, Rule 9 of the Code of Civil Procedure, 1908, stipulates that every plaint must contain a concise statement of the material facts which the plaintiff relies on for his claim. This rule is crucial as it forms the foundation on which the entire case is built. Without it, the court cannot proceed with the case as the material facts, which are the essence of the claim, are missing. Now what happens if a plaint does not comply with this rule? Well, the court can reject the plaint, which is a severe consequence. The non-compliant plaint essentially fails to provide a clear roadmap for the court to follow, making it difficult, if not impossible, to fairly adjudicate the case. This is why it's so important for every plaint to comply with Order 7, Rule 9. It's not just about adhering to legal protocol, it's about ensuring that justice can be served effectively. Failing to comply with this rule can lead to unnecessary delays and complications and ultimately the rejection of the plaint. In closing, non-compliance with Order 7, Rule 9 is a legal misstep that can lead to the rejection of the plaint. It's a rule that underscores the importance of clarity, precision, and thoroughness in the legal process. Order 7 Rule 11 might seem complex, but it's a crucial rule in the Code of Civil Procedure, 1908. As we've discussed, this rule outlines the grounds for rejecting a plaint, which is the first step in any civil litigation. It's a rule that calls for precision and attention to detail. Firstly, the plaint must clearly state a cause of action. Secondly, the relief claimed in the plaint must be accurately valued. It's also mandatory for the plaint to be properly stamped. If it's not, it risks rejection. Furthermore, if the suit is barred by any statute, or if the plaint is not filed in duplicate, it can be dismissed. And lastly, the plaint must also comply with Order 7 Rule 9. It's important to remember that Order 7 Rule 11 is not optional. It's a mandatory power of the court. Understanding these rules can be the difference between success and failure in legal proceedings. Remember, the devil is in the details, especially when it comes to legal proceedings. Understanding Order 7, Rule 11 can make a big difference.